What's up everybody? This is My Tech Pro Tips. And on this episode, we are going to discuss scotch locks or crush locks. These are sent with a lot of kits. It's a cheap out uh, that manufacturers usually send these with to have you splice into an existing circuit. Um, and these suck for a number of reasons. Uh, one, they don't make good contact with the conductor because it pierces the insulation to make contact with the copper conductor. Um, the other thing that it causes is moisture ingress. It's an entry point now for water to get into your circuit and cause problems. So we know that's bad, right? So what I want to do is, is do just a quick demo of how these work, right? And they're, they're kind of cumbersome, but um, in a pinch, they can work, especially in an emergency. But guys, I, I, I want to tell you not to use these. There's better ways around this, but I'll show you. So what I've done, I've just for the sake of conversation, I've taken a... A uh, black wire and a red wire and we're going to splice them together so I have my black wire inserted and my red wire inserted so now you can see so just picture that there's an existing wire here and I'm splicing into the black and I want to connect the red okay so what you do is you fold this down over the top you can see that the plastic's actually starting to break and then you want to push it through basically cutting through the insulation so I'm going to take my wire strippers here I'm going to push this down so you can see they're spliced together Right, and this one's actually kind of strong. If you get them to work right, they'll hold. Okay, so if we were to test this, it may pass a resistance test. But what I want to do is now take it back apart, and I want to show you what the wire looks like that we just spliced together and why this doesn't work. So this might not be the easiest to get right back off, so give me a second. Okay, so you can see here where we used to have that piece sticking up, it's now buried in the, the wire and the insulation. And if you push too hard, you'll actually cut right through the insulation. So let's see if we can get this thing apart so we can take a look at it. So I'm prying it back apart here. And these are also one use. So once we do this, it's over. Okay, so if you'll look closely here, you'll see that that is the wire that we were trying to splice in. And you can see that it actually did not even pierce the insulation, it just smashed it. Here's the black one. So the black one, it did pierce the insulation and the conductor, but it also broke through some of the strands of conductor which is not good, right? That actually um, increases the resistance in the circuit because we're losing strands to be able to pass current through this conductor, through this wire. So, and, and now, now this, this wire has kind of lost its strength because we've, we've busted it, right? I could probably twist this back and forth and, and, and completely, we've lost about half our, half our conductors. So this is just a, a good lesson of what not to do. Um, actually, I'll go ahead and maybe break this apart. But, but you can see, especially if you have wires, maybe you don't tie them down or in a place where they move. It's, it's just bad, right? This is what it looks like now. So some other options to use. This is for smaller wire. This is using the telephone industry for splicing phone cables. And this is for splicing two wires together and you basically push them together. And it's the same concept, but for the smaller wires, um, like, 24 gauge and above it actually works okay and this is this is for splicing three wires I typically don't use these because you end up with a bundle of wires basically all kind of stuck together this way um, you know together in the end of the splice so those are for small wires the best way is to use your standard heat shrink butt splice right with your insulated crimpers and if you don't have the insulated crimpers you can use these crimpers that have a slot 
for the insulated portion, which is right here. Right. So what you would do typically in, in this case, and we'll have another episode to explain this in detail. Uh, you would twist the two wires together that you want to splice and put them in one end and then your single wire coming out the other end. So last but not least, this is a way to do it. If, if you're at a termination point and you want to um, bring two wires together at, say, a maybe a, a, a relay or a, um, a back of a switch block, uh, a switch rocker switch, then you can you can use these. But what this allows me to do is I can I can splice this to one wire, like say and I can have another wire with a female end and I can put it on this and then connect that to another male side. It just depends, you have options, but remember this is not heat shrink so you have to weatherproof this with heat shrink and, and or uh, a little bit of liquid electrical tape is, is always a good addition. But um, just for a quick kind of overview for the butt splices, so I'm gonna cut this old, old conductor off here I like to cut them a little long if I'm going to splice them together. And I don't twist them until I get them here like this. So I haven't twisted them yet and I'm going to twist these two wires together. All right? And there's both of my wires together and that wasn't a good twist so let's do it a little bit. More and that's one reason why I like these heat shrink butt splices because um, it allows you to basically suck down on the wire when you heat it, and then of course twist the same direction that you twist the wires together and twist on. And there you have your two wires going into one wire. So that's just a quick overview. So back to the beginning, Scotch locks don't use them. This guy is garbage now. So thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about um, the Scotch Lock or what we've done, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. And as always, please click the like and subscribe to My Tech Pro Tips. Thanks a million.